Rixland, and welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Fads come and go. They're fun and they spread quickly, but soon the hype dies down, and before you know it, they're just so 2017. As a teacher, I get to see plenty. Kendamas, fidget spinners, shirts that say pink, but aren't really pink. But one fad that's been around since lodestones were discovered about 2,500 years ago is not going away. Magnets. I don't know of a single kid or adult who has gotten bored with magnets. But what I have often found is that some people don't know some of the really cool things that magnets can do besides just attract and repel. Magnets can induce. So what? What does induce mean? Well, check this out. This here is my large copper block that I just so happen to have. Hey, what can I say? I'm a science teacher. I got connections. And this here is my cubic inch sized neodymium magnet. This thing is really strong. I make sure when this thing's out, it's nowhere near credit cards, technology, cell phones. This thing could be disastrous to anything that stores electronic information. Take a look at what it can do to these paper clips when it's just somewhat nearby them. But when I place it next to the copper, well, not much is happening. Copper is not something that's attracted to a magnet. But now, watch what happens when I drop it on the copper. The magnet seems to fall a lot slower on the copper than it should. And you can't really feel this at home. But when I move the magnet around above the copper, I feel a resistance to its movement. So what's going on here? Why does the magnet fall slower above the copper? And why, when I move it from side to side, does it feel like it's resisting that movement? Well, it's all about inducing a magnetic field in the copper. When a magnetic field is moving, it will also move the electrons of nearby objects if those electrons are easily moved. Materials that have electrons that are very easy to move, we call those conductors. And copper is an excellent conductor. When electrons in a material are all moving in the same direction, well, that's an electric current. And electric currents, they produce their own magnetic fields. So if the magnet is on or near the copper, but it's not moving, well, then the copper has no current and there's no magnetic field that it's producing. But as soon as the magnet is moving, electrons in the copper are moving as well. And they're all moving in the same direction. And when that's happening, whether it's because I'm moving the magnet side to side or letting it fall closer to the copper, the copper is producing its own magnetic field. The other cool part about this is that no matter which way you move the magnet, the magnetic field that's induced will always be in opposition to the magnetic field of the magnet. It'll always oppose the motion. But hey, you want to have your own fun with this too, right? Don't worry, you can experience this too with some really easy to get a hold of household items. While they're not the same size and strength as the magnet I was using, neodymium magnets aren't really that hard to get a hold of these days. You can find them in most hardware stores. And if for some reason you can't find neodymium, that's okay. Other magnets will work for this too. It's just the stronger the better. And the only other item that you'll need for this is a copper pipe. This one's easily long enough to do what we want to do, and this cost me about two bucks. Now watch what happens when I take the neodymium magnets and drop them down the pipe. That was way slower than it should have been. Here, let's get another Mr. Lund to compare. So, over here on your right, I'll drop them down the pipe again. And over here on your left, I'll drop them outside of the pipe so we can see the difference. Ready? Ready. Three, Three two, two, one, drop. Thanks. Glad I could help. Peace out. Now this is pretty awesome, but something you could try too is experiment with different amounts of magnets. In my pack I got six. Well, what happens if I only use three? What happens if I get a few more and try 12? I want you to try experimenting with this. See what different amounts and strengths of magnets will do in affecting how fast it falls down the pipe. If you increase how many magnets, you are changing the magnetic field, but also you're increasing the mass that you're dropping. How will that change the speed? Try it out. I really hope this episode helps you explore your romance with magnets in a whole new way. And hey, why not share this video with others so we, they can get excited about magnets all over again. 
you may find that having fun with maggots is quite attractive. <laughs> uh, and if you enjoyed this, give it that thumbs up like and subscribe to the channel. We've got some really cool things involving maggots coming soon. I'm Rich Lund, thanks for watching, and may the force be with you, temporarily induced by magnetic fields or otherwise. See you next time. Now drop the bass, yeah, I got an acid, how strong's my acid, titrate that acid, now drop the bass, yeah, I got an acid, how strong's my acid, titrate that acid, now drop the bass, uh.